Welcome to the second video in our series on standard costing and variance analysis. In this video, we will be focusing on preparing a flexed budget. Based on the flexed budget, we will then also unpack the different variances we have for variance analysis. So what are our learning objectives for this video? First, we want to be able to explain what a flexed budget is. We will then prepare a flexed budget using an example. We will use the same example with some extensions throughout the series. Based on the flexed budget, we will then identify our overall variances. Finally, we will have an overview of the different variances that we can calculate in a standard costing system. To fully understand what a flexed budget is, we are going to work through a few important terms. First, we have the static budget. This is a budget that is prepared at the start of the budgeting period and does not change when activity levels change. Next, we have a flexible budget. This budget is also prepared at the start of the period, but unlike the static budget, it accommodates a range of activity levels. Finally, we have the flexed budget. Unlike the previous budgets, this one is created at the end of the period and reflects what should have been achieved given the actual activity levels. So let's have a look at our example. Take a few screenshots so you have all the information on hand. In our example, we have a manufacturing company producing a single product, being widgets. This product requires a single process and the standard cost for this process is presented in the cost card on screen. We see that we have direct materials A and B, we have direct labor, we have variable overheads, and for each of these, we are given a quantity standard and a price standard. We then have the total standard variable cost, the standard contribution margin, and the standard selling price. The directors in this example have noted that the total widget market size is 100,000 units per month. The company estimates that it has a market share of 10%. As a result, the company plans to produce and sell 10,000 widgets in the month of April. And the budgeted costs, based on the information contained in the standard cost card, are as follows. And again, we see we have our sales figure, we have our direct materials A and B, our direct labor, our variable overheads. Notice, for each one, we have a quantity in total and a price per kilogram for materials and per hour for direct labor and variable overheads. We then have our budgeted contribution, our fixed overheads, and our budgeted profit for the period. Variable manufacturing overheads are charged to production on the basis of direct labor hours. Annual budgeted fixed overheads are 4.8 million rand and are assumed to be incurred evenly throughout the year. The company uses a variable costing system for internal reporting purposes. We should have been able to pick this up already on the basis that our income statement had a contribution line and the fixed overheads did not form part of that contribution. The example then continues to tell us that actual production and sales for the period were 9,000 widgets and the total market size for April was in fact 108,000 widgets. We are then provided with the actual results for April. We can see here that our final profit was lower at 363,950 Rand. It is then noted that materials A and B can be interchanged. Further, due to an unexpected machine breakdown, direct labor was paid for an additional 5,000 hours during which they performed no work. These labor hours are included in the direct labor line item. For this example, we are then required to calculate all variances evident in the above scenario, as well as possible causes for such variances, assuming a variable costing system. You are also required to reconcile the budgeted profit to the actual profit. Now, for the purposes of this video, we are not going to look at the required as stated. We will do this over the course of the series. Rather, we will focus on preparing the flexed budget 
and calculating the high-level total variances. So let us begin by looking at the basic layout. You will notice that on the left-hand side, we have our basic income statement format. We have two extra rows for sales and production units. Remember that production costs must be flexed using the production units, whereas the sales costs must be flexed using sales units. We then have four columns. First is the static budget. The static budget is our original budget, which remains unchanged, even if there have been changes in the business activity levels. Next, we have our flexed budget. Remember, this budget will take into account our original standards, but it will use the actual activity levels. Next, we get our actual results. This is simply the results we actually achieve for the period. And finally, we have a column for our variances. This column represents the differences between our actual and flexed performance. Remember, these are not the detailed variances that we can calculate, but rather the total variances at a high level. So we can fill in our static budget information directly from the scenario. We can also fill in our actual information directly from the scenario. Now we need to prepare the flexed budget. Our flexed budget output matches the actual output. Our actual sales and production units need to be used. Now we need to restate all our static budget figures based on our actual level of sales and production. Remember again that items related to sales are flexed based on the sales units whereas items driven by production are flexed based on the production units. In our case, sales and production are the same. If they weren't, we would need to account for opening and closing stock. So let us start with sales. Because our standard hasn't changed, we can simply take the 2 million rand, divide it by the budgeted sales units of 10,000, and multiply it by the flexed sales units of 9,000. This will give us a flexed sales value of 1.8 million rand. Let's do the next one, which is now our production cost, material A. Our budgeted cost is 150,000 rand. As this is a production cost, we need to flex it based on our production units. So we take the 150,000 rand and divide it by the 10,000 production units, and then multiply by the flex production of 9,000 units. To get a flex cost for direct material A of 135,000 Rand. Now pause this video and see if you can complete the flexed budget. Great, let's see if you got the rest of them right. Direct material B will have a flex cost of 90,000 Rand. Direct labor will be 450,000 Rand. Variable overheads will be 225,000 Rand, giving us a total cost of sales of 900,000 Rand. We can then calculate our flex contribution also as 900,000 Rand. Now we move on to the fixed overheads. I hope you thought carefully about this one. Remember, fixed overheads do not vary with production or sales, so they remain constant at 400,000 Rand, even though we flex the budget. We can now calculate our flex profit at 500,000 Rand. Our next step then is to calculate our variances. Our variances are simply the difference between our actual and flexed results. So let us start with our sales revenue. Our actual sales revenue is 1,845,000 Rand, while our flexed revenue is 1.8 million Rand. The difference is 45,000 Rand. Now we have to determine if the variance is favorable or unfavorable. In this case, we can see that we have received more money than we planned to. Making more money is a good thing, so the variance is favorable. Let's look at another one, direct material A. 
The difference between the actual results and the flex results is 3,250 Rand. This is an expense, so we need to remember that it is better to spend less. As we have spent 3,250 Rand less than we should have, the variance is again favorable. We always need to indicate if a variance is favorable or unfavorable. Take a moment now to pause the video and calculate the rest of the variances. Think carefully about whether the variance is favorable or unfavorable. Great, let's go through them together. Direct material B is an unfavorable variance of 4,500 Rand. Direct labor is also an unfavorable variance of 132,000 Rand. And variable overhead is 7,800 Rand unfavorable. This means our total cost of sales variance is 141,050 Rand unfavorable. Our budgeted contribution is therefore 96,050 Rand lower than it should have been. Finally, our fixed overheads have an unfavorable variance of 40,000 Rand, making our budgeted net profit 136,050 Rand less. Remember again that these are the overall variances. We will break them down into their parts over the course of this series. So in this video, let us consider the variances that we can calculate. For now, we will consider a variable costing system. We will highlight the differences between variable and absorption costing as we proceed in our series. First, we have our profit variant, which represents the total difference between our budgeted and actual profits. This can be broken down into three major categories. The first major category is our total sales margin variant which can be further broken down into the price and volume variances. Where we have multiple products, the volume variance can be broken down further into a mix and quantity variance. If we have details on the overall market, the volume variance can also be broken down into the market size and market share variances. Watch out for the differences between variable and absorption costing when calculating these variances. Our next major category is the production cost variances. These variances can be separated for each type of production cost. So we will get our materials variances, which are broken down into the price and usage variances. If we have multiple raw materials that can be interchanged, we can break the usage variance into a mix and yield variance. Next, still under our production cost variances, we have our labor variances. These can be broken down into the labor rate and efficiency variances. Our efficiency variance can be further broken down into an idle time and pure labor efficiency variance. Finally, if we have multiple classes of labor that are interchangeable, we can again calculate a mix and yield variance. We then have our variable overhead variance, which can be broken down into an expenditure and efficiency variance. Our final production cost variance is the fixed overhead expenditure variance. We will have a lot more fun with this variance when we consider absorption costing later on. Our final category of variances is our non-manufacturing cost variances. Depending on if we can develop standards which are useful for control purposes, we may just have a total variance, or we may be able to break it up into an expenditure and efficiency component. We will look at each of these variances in detail as we progress through the series. While it may seem easy to memorize a bunch of formula, this is not useful. Rather, I encourage you to carefully understand what each variance is calculating. You will also see a lot of similarities between the variances. Some similarities we should see are that the calculations of our price variances are all similar. These variances include our sales margin price, our materials price, our labor rate, 
our variable overhead expenditure and our non-manufacturing expenditure if applicable. Our usage variances are also all similar. These include our materials usage, labor efficiency, variable overhead efficiency, and non-manufacturing efficiency. We can then see that our materials mix and yield variances are similar to our labor mix and yield variances. These variances are also related to, but slightly different from, the sales margin mix and quantity. So what we see is that there are a lot of similarities. If we can understand what we are doing, we will save time trying to memorize, and we will also have a better understanding of what could cause the variances in the first place. That brings us to the end of our video on the flexed budget. Join us for our next video where we will begin our detailed variance analysis looking at our material variances. See you next time.